my pocket. This is me, Jason Mason. This is my house, where I live with my mum, dad, sister and grandpa. Oh, and here's grandpa's dog, Beowulf. The thing about grandpa is that he's always fun. Captain we read Captain Dumble twit stories. And his record sprung out of the side of the spaceship. Yes. We play lots of games. One, two, three, four, five, six. <laughs> One of the things I like doing best with Grandpa is making pictures. <laughs> we share our ice cream. <laughs> and Grandpa is always like this. <laughs> It was a Saturday afternoon. I was playing a quiet game of Snap with Grandpa. It had to be a quiet game because there was a special visitor in the corner. A baby. We were looking after him while his mum and dad were at a wedding. And Mum had said to us... No noisy games, you two, OK? Baby Boris needs his sleep. Baby Boris is very funny. He does this, and this, and sometimes this. But he's always smiling and laughing and having fun. That's why we'd all been looking forward to the day the baby came to stay. I wonder what he's dreaming about. Jemima loves babies. So does Grandpa. Especially when they're asleep. Snap! Whoa! -ho! Shh! We held our breath, thinking we got away with it, and that baby Boris was still sleeping. But then. <coughs> Mum! Grandpa woke the baby! <coughs> oh, Grandpa. Sorry, baby Boris. <coughs> We tried to carry on with our game, but Baby Boris cried louder and louder and louder. Grandpa couldn't stand it. Beowulf couldn't stand it. What could possibly be upsetting him so much? Jemima was pulling funny faces to try to make Baby Boris laugh. But obviously it wasn't working. There's nothing for it. If Jemima can't cheer him up, then I will. All it needs is a touch of Grandpa magic. Not the shrinking cup, Grandpa! Catch me if you can! Grandpa, come back! You know when Grandpa shrinks, he can get up to all kinds of magical things. He can get into my car and make it go. Grandpa, stop! on Gordon, my toy seagull. Wee! 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 <laughs> Not the plane, Grandpa! He can fly off in my plane. Grandpa, come back here! Grandpa, watch out! I'm the only one who knows about Grandpa's magic shrinking cap. Everyone thinks he's gone for a little lie down when he's missing. And he was missing now. Is he OK, Mum? That's fine. Where's Grandpa? Gone for a little lie down, I suppose. I thought he'd want to play with baby Boris. That was exactly what Grandpa wanted to do. I had to get rid of Mum and Jemima. I know. Why don't we do a show for him? Yes, he'll love that. I'll go and get Malcolm and Petunia. Mum, I think baby Boris is hungry. Are you a teeny bit hungry, won't we, baby Boris? Shall I make you something yummy scrammy for your tummy wummy? <laughs> I'll make him some lunch. You keep an eye on him, please, Jason. The person I really needed to keep an eye on was Grandpa. I had a feeling he would pop out at any moment. Grandpa! Oh, oh well done, Jason. You've cheered him up. 
Just then, Grandpa popped up again. Won't be long now. As soon as Mum had gone, I decided to move to Jack in a Box. You've got to get out. This is way too dangerous. I can't stop now. I'm making baby Boris laugh. We can do the show from behind the sofa. Come on, Jason. But there was no time to argue. Mum kept popping in to check on baby Boris. And I kept popping up to check on Grandpa. But he disappeared. Jason, come here. Hello, baby Boris. I'm Petunia, the purple elephant with the very long trunk. And this is my friend, Mark and the monkey with the sticky out ears. It sounded like baby Boris was really enjoying the show. Say hello to baby Boris, Malcolm. One day, Petunia, the purple elephant with the very long trunk, was walking through the jungle. Stomp, stomp, stomp. When suddenly, she bumped into Malcolm the monkey with the sticky out ears. Whoop! <laughs> Jemima's shows are funny, but they're not that funny. I had to see what was going on. The good news was, the baby was having a lovely time. The bad news was, he was playing with Grandpa. Jason! I need you! <laughs> Morning, Malcolm! said Petunia in a very loud voice. And Malcolm the monkey said... I have to do something. Baby Boris was about to throw Grandpa across the room. I had to stop him. And Malcolm the monkey said... Wee! But I was too late. What was that? Sounded like a squeaky dog toy. But it wasn't a squeaky dog toy. It was a squeaky Grandpa. Luckily, he wasn't hurt. And Malcolm the monkey said... Oh, I give up! Hello, sweetie. Shall we get something yummy-scrummy for your tummy wummy? Jemima decided she had enough of entertaining baby Boris, so she went upstairs to her room. As for Grandpa... I knew he had to be hiding somewhere, but where? You were so good at making baby Boris laugh, Jason. Or perhaps you can get him to eat. At first, he didn't want to know. Then suddenly, he started smiling, as if he'd just seen his favourite toy. And he had! Mum had a lot of washing up to do, so she didn't see Grandpa helping baby Boris. <laughs> You've got a real knack with babies, Jason. But baby Boris had the spoon now, and I knew there'd be trouble. Yuck! <laughs> oh dear. But I wasn't the only one who needed cleaning up. Do we need to change your nappy wappy? <laughs> the changing wasn't going very well. Baby Boris wouldn't keep still, and Mum couldn't remember how to fold a nappy. Then Baby Boris started laughing at something. Grandpa had come to the rescue yet again. That's it, Jason. Keep it up. Luckily, Mum didn't see Grandpa dancing on the shelf, ordering high kicks and twirls, or losing his balance and falling into the nappy bucket. There. All done. Before I could do anything, Mum picked up the nappy bucket and took it into the kitchen. Now, where did I put that washing powder? She was about to put Grandpa in the washing machine. I had to do something. I'll put the washing in, Mum. Oh, thank you, Jason. You've been such a help today. While Mum wasn't looking, I slipped Grandpa into my pocket. After I'd washed my hands, I dashed into the sitting room and put Grandpa down. He whipped his shrinking cap off and came back to his normal size. We were just in time. Baby Boris's parents had come to collect him. Hello. Hello. 
He's been no trouble at all. He's been good as gold. Let me help you get him into the car. We did it, Jason. Teamwork, eh? Yes, teamwork. <laughs> <laughs> Poor Grandpa. I think you need a bath. Here we are, Wolfie. Have a yummy, scrummy, treaty weety. Yes. Well, I think we all did really well today looking after baby Boris. Grandpa didn't help. He was lying down the whole time. Yes? Slept like a baby. <laughs> Captain Dumbletwit pressed a button and an enormous tennis racket sprung out of the side of his spaceship. Grandpa was reading me a Captain Dumbletwit story. He was going as fast as he could because any minute Mum was going to start up again on her latest hobby. Mum's always taking up new hobbies. One week it's karate, then it's salsa dancing, then cake decorating, the ukulele, Knitting. Opera singing. And now this. Yes, Mum was learning to play a tuneful toot on the trumpet. It was making our ears hurt, even Beowulf's. Oh, I don't know why Mum chose the trumpet. There are loads of instruments here, much easier to play. Triangles, tambourines, maracas. It's a good job I'm going out this afternoon. Grandpa was going to meet his friends at the Young at Heart Club. Once a month, they meet at Miss Smiley's Cafe for ice cream sundaes and a sing-song with Mr Whoops. But today, there was a bit of a problem. Hello, it's Miss Smiley here. I've got a bit of a problem and I was wondering if you could help. I'll try. Must be time to go. I wonder what we'll sing today. Sunny sands, sunny sands, it's a great place to be. Bad news, I'm afraid. Mr Whoops has fallen over his keyboard and broken it. So he won't be able to play for the sing song. But the good news is, wait for it. Miss Smiley has asked me to play instead, on the trumpet! You'll have to come with us, Jason. I know. We'll take all the instruments, in case anyone wants to join in. Actually, uh, I don't think I'm up to the young at hearts today. I, I'm, I'm feeling a bit tired, you know. Oh, no, Grandpa, what a shame. And you so love your sing-song. Get ready, Jason. I'll put some lipstick on and then we'll go. Grandpa, you've got to come. Mum's going to need our help. Couldn't agree more. And I'll be a lot more help to her if I'm small. Not the shrinking cap, Grandpa! Catch me if you can! You know when Grandpa shrinks, he can get to put all kinds of magical things. Get into my car and make it go. Or he could just run for all he's worth. I couldn't find Grandpa anywhere. Don't forget the instrument box, Jason. Where's Grandpa? Gone for a little lie down, I expect. That's what everyone thinks when Grandpa goes missing. They don't know about the shrinking cap. So we got into Campo and set off for Miss Smiley's cafe. And Mum said... I've never played the trumpet in public before. I'm so excited. And I said, aren't you a bit nervous? And Mum said... <laughs> no! Such a pity Grandpa can't make it. Poor thing, he spends so much time stuck indoors. But Grandpa wasn't planning to be stuck indoors today. I was sure he was on his way. I just didn't know how. Soon we arrived at Miss Smiley's cafe. 
which, as you know, is the best cafe in the world. The young at heart were just finishing their ice cream sundaes and were ready for their sing-song to begin. Mum was warming up in the toilet. Do you think she's all right? Yes, um, just doing some last-minute practice. Oh, of course. Oh, won't be long now, I promise. Perhaps I'd better hurry her up. I was wondering where Grandpa was. But I didn't have to wonder for long, because he was in the instrument box playing the maracas. Of course, I had to pretend it was me. I quickly took the box behind the curtains and opened it up. Oh, thank goodness it's you. It was getting really stuffy in there. How's it going? Not very well. Mama's making strange noises in the toilet. Well, you can't keep the young at hearts waiting any longer. You'll have to start the sing-song yourself. Me? So before I knew it, there I was on the stage, about to sing. Sunny sands, sunny sands, it's a great place to be. It's sunny and it's sandy and it's right by the sea. There's a beach from here to here, you can stroll along the pier. There's a cafe for a bite to eat, enjoy your ice cream sundae treat. Suddenly I saw Grandpa. I couldn't see how he was going to help Mum from up there. But there was no time to find out because she was ready at last. And she was looking very excited. Thank you for starting us off, Jason. That was wonderful. But now it's time for the star of today's show. I give you... Jason's mum on the trumpet! <laughs> mum took a bit of time to get herself completely ready. We all held our breath and waited for her to play. At last, she put the trumpet to her lips and... <laughs> then she tried again and... <laughs> Grandpa was signalling to me. Um, I think it might be better over this side, Mum. There's, um, there, there, there's more light. Oh, OK. I had no idea what Grandpa was up to, but he definitely had a plan. Mum tried again, but all that came out was... <laughs> oh, I don't understand. It sounded really good at home. I think it must be broken. <laughs> Sorry, but I don't think I can play. No, I'm... Mum was giving up, and I didn't know what else I could do. But Grandpa did. At last, I knew why he needed to be small to help. You must try again, Mum. Please try blowing really gently. Go on. OK, just for you. So Mum put the trumpet to her mouth again and blew very gently. And guess what? She played an amazing tune. But of course, it wasn't Mum playing at all. It was Grandpa making a trumpet sound. Sunny sands, sunny sands, it's a great place to be. It's sunny and it's sandy and it's right by the sea. There's a beach from here to here, you can stroll along the pier. There's a cafe for a bite to eat, enjoy a nice new Sunday treat. Sunny sands, sunny sands, it's a great place to be. Once Mum, or rather Grandpa, had started, there was no stopping them. Sunny sands, sunny sands, it's a great place to stay. The house is so, so pretty, and the sun shines every day. There's a lighthouse on the shore, oh, who could ask for more? A toy shop for your buttons and spades, don't forget your hat and chains. Sunny sands, sunny sands, it's a great place to go. Hearts loved it. Mum was so happy, she decided to play a fanfare. 
she forgot all about blowing gently and blew as hard as she could. Luckily, the young at heart were so busy clapping, they didn't see this. <laughs> Are you all right, Grandpa? Yes, fine, thanks. Just a bit of a sore throat. <laughs> I kept Grandpa safely in my pocket until we got home. Inside before anyone else. And put him on the floor. Grandpa quickly whipped off his cap and came back to his normal size. We did it, Jason. Teamwork, eh? Yes, Grandpa. Teamwork! <laughs> there you are, Grandpa. How are you feeling? Any better? Oh, not too bad. A bit thirsty. Me too. All that playing. I'll make a cup of tea. Such a shame you couldn't be there. It went ever so well, didn't it, Jason? It was fantastic. There's nothing I like better than a tuneful toot on a trumpet. <laughs> Grandpa, you're so clever. That's exactly how my trumpet playing sounded. Fancy that. <laughs> It's wonderful. Looks just like Sunny Sands. Our town is called Sunny Sands because it's always sunny and it's by the sea. We love spending time at our beach hut on the beach. And you can see the lighthouse from my bedroom window. This is Mum and Dad's bike shop. And here's Miss Smiley's cafe, which serves the best ice cream sundaes in the world. Then there's Mr Whoops' shop, where you can buy anything and everything. Everyone loves Sunny Sands. And today, all of Mum and Dad's friends in Sunny Sands had sent cards because it was their wedding anniversary. Happy anniversary! What do you think? <laughs> do you like it? It's beautiful. Oh, thank you. What a lovely surprise. And speaking of surprises... Oh, oh my goodness. <gasps> oh, it's perfect. Thank you. <laughs> I'll treasure it. <laughs> I'm going to wear it all the time. I'll never take it off. Never, never, never. <laughs> oh, yes. Dad had just given Mum something to treasure forever. Dad went off to the bike shop. See you later. And Mum went into the garden to pick some flowers. She had a new hobby. Flower arranging. Mum's always taking up new hobbies. One week it's karate, then it's salsa dancing, then cake decorating, the ukulele, knitting. Opera singing. So Mum was picking flowers, when suddenly... My necklace. Oh, it's gone. Oh, no. It didn't. It couldn't have. Oh. Mum, got my towel, got my swim costume. It's time to go. Jemima was going to her first diving lesson. Look, I've even just Peter in his diving outfit. Peter was one of Jemima's favourite dolls. Mum was looking worried. What's the matter, Mum? I can't find my lovely necklace. I think it must have fallen in the pond. Oh, Mum. And you promised Dad you'd never take it off. Don't you worry. I'll find it for you. Oh, no, Grandpa, you mustn't. I don't want you ending up in the pond. Well, we'll have to look for it later. What am I going to tell Dad? Oh, how silly of me to lose it. Well, Jason, it seems to me that someone is going to have to dive into that pond and find the necklace. I knew what Grandpa was thinking. 
And what is it that gets us out of all kinds of trouble, eh? My shrinking cap. I'm the only one who knows about Grandpa's magic shrinking cap. When he puts it on, he shrinks like this. And this. And this. Nobody else is allowed to see him. He gets up to all kinds of mischief. He can drive my toy car. He can fly my toy plane. When Grandpa's wearing his shrinking cap, anything he gets into or onto will go. He can get into all sorts of very small places, like in the teapot, on the top shelf, in Beowulf's basket, under the floorboards. And sometimes he likes to get into my pocket. Oh, yes. I don't know what I'd do without my shrinking cap. Neither do I. Pass me, Peter. If I'm going diving for treasure, I'm going to need a wetsuit. I knew there was no stopping Grandpa, so I picked up Peter. But just then, the doorbell went. Oh, no. Who could that be? It was Great Aunt Loretta. I've come to cook a lovely meal for Mum and Dad oh. for their anniversary. Oh, but it looks like I need to clear up a bit first. What a mess! Oh, yes. Grandpa's sister had arrived. She makes really weird food, like sausage with sardine sauce. And she drinks green gloop. And she's always stubbing her toe. We have a pack of peas in the freezer that we always put on it. And she's often like this. Or like this. And she makes Grandpa feel like this. Look at all this muck. And I'll have that old thing too. It's going in the bin. I don't know why you're so attached to it. You've had it forever. But Great Aunt Loretta! No buts. It's a dirty, smelly old cap. And that is the right place for it. This was a disaster. But luckily, Grandpa had a plan. I'll get the diving gear off, Peter. You go and get the cap. Now, this is what you'll do. Great Aunt Loretta? Mm, yes, what is it? Oh, these onions are making me cry. Um, Dad gave Mum a necklace for her anniversary, but she lost it. What? Already? Oh, typical. I think it might have got swept up and put into the bin. Well, you better have a look then, hadn't you? <laughs> Great Aunt Loretta was so busy blowing her nose that she'd forgotten about Grandpa's cap and I was able to rescue it. <laughs> well done, Jason. I'm ready. Now, once I'm small, these will just about fit me. Oi, Jason Mason! Now, Grandpa. I've had to clear all this up off the floor. Oh, I see. You fished it out the bin, did you? What are you doing? Get Give back to me. It's not yours. You, Grandpa. It's my dirty old cap. Get back to me. Get back to me. Get back to me. Get back to me. My grandpa gave me that cap. Well, now it's going in the dustbin outside. We couldn't let this happen. Ah! Luckily, Grandpa had an idea. I saw something move inside the bag. It must be a mouse. Ah! Help! Ooh! Ooh! Call me when you've got rid of it. I quickly got the cap out of the bin and handed it to Grandpa. I'm going swimming. Shrink, Grandpa, shrink. <laughs> Grandpa was off. Now you know what he's like when he shrinks. He just wants to have fun. So he zoomed along the floor, climbed up the table leg, then ran along the shelf. <laughs> Grandpa, quick, get the diving suit on. Soon Grandpa was dressed in Peter's diving clothes and was ready to jump. The good news was that Grandpa had finally got into the pond. The bad news was Dad had just come home. I'm home! Would you believe it? I've had a puncture. I didn't want Dad to spot Grandpa's snorkel. Don't come out yet, Grandpa, or Dad will see you. What are you doing, Jason? Nothing. 
Mom and Jemima back yet? Not yet. Good. That'll give me time to fix this. Dad's always mending things, especially bikes, because he runs the bike shop in town. He fixes tyres and wheels and chains. He's really good at fixing bikes. Where's Grandpa? Gone for a little lie down, has he? Grandpa was still under the water, but he couldn't stay there much longer. I needed to find a way to get Dad out of the garden. Then I remembered. Guess what, Dad? Great Aunt Aretha's upstairs and she's really upset. Oh, no. Why? She thought there was a mouse in the rubbish, but there wasn't. I'll go up and see her. It's all right. You can come out now. Hurry, Grandpa. Quick as you can. Grandpa got back into his own clothes while Dad was upstairs with Great Aunt Loretta. He ran into the sitting room, took his cap off and was soon back to his normal size. Meanwhile, I put Peter's wetsuit back on him. Did you find it, Grandpa? Of course I found it. <sighs> You're amazing. I couldn't have done it without you, though. Teamwork. Teamwork. <laughs> <laughs> I nearly did a die. Oh, well done, Jemima. I'm going straight outside to try and find my necklace. No need. I said we'd find it, and we did. In the pond. <gasps> oh, Grandpa. You shouldn't have. Oh, thank you. Peter's all wet. Jason, I suppose you're going to tell me that he died for the necklace. Um, kind of. Later, we all sat down to eat Great Aunt Loretta's surprise anniversary meal. Fried egg and banana pasta with raw onion sprinkles. Come on, beat up! You're still wearing your necklace then? Oh yes, something to treasure forever. A bit like this, eh, Jason?